you do know that I'm a climate scientist and I've spent 30 years doing this and all you want me to do is to react to some funny memes on social media. <laughs> One does not simply fix climate change. I came down one day and said, oh, Greta Thongbos followed me on Twitter. And I went, you followed her back? And I went, I'm playing it cool. <laughs> <laughs> I will in an hour's time. <laughs> Hi, Platform. I'm Professor Mark Mazin, and I study climate. I'm also the author of How to Save Our Planet, the facts. But today I'm not going to talk about climate change. What I'm going to do is react to some of the interesting climate memes that you would have seen on social media. Oh, this is absolutely brilliant. This is a piece of climate change art. The Prime Minister of Britain in 1989, Margaret Thatcher, stood in front of the UN and said, Climate change is an issue. We, the leaders of the world, should deal with it. The amount of CO2 that we've put into the atmosphere has doubled since then. So this meme really sums up that 30 years of chatting, debating, arguing, and doing absolutely bugger all. We stopped doing anything. I mean, we were stuck at home, we didn't fly, we didn't take the car out, and that happened almost everywhere in the world. The amount of carbon dioxide we were emitting into the atmosphere only dropped by 7%. And what it meant is people realised that actually most of the emissions going into the atmosphere are due to our huge requirement for energy and the way we produce energy through coal-fired power stations, natural gas stations that are producing all of this steam to turn turbines to make electricity. Second problem is, of course, agriculture. We still needed food, people are still producing food. So the pandemic taught us that actually, if we just, as individuals, stop doing anything, actually there's still huge amounts of emissions that we have to deal with. The other thing that the pandemic showed was the debate about climate change didn't go away. And the, one of the things that a lot of international bodies, like the International Monetary Fund, have been actually telling governments is, build back green from the pandemic. Take the lessons from the pandemic and then build back the infrastructure, the power generation, in a more green and sustainable way. So the pandemic has actually taught us a lot of things about climate change that we may not have realized in the past. Actually, it's really deep. We're doing it to ourselves. We've had pollution problems in the past. We found out that putting mercury out of uh, factories into the water caused birth defects. But we're humans. We can just adapt and actually change our technology. One does not simply fix climate change. The other way to look at this is we have all the solutions. We have all the technology. We simply have to actually use it we could have a really, really positive, healthy, safe society by the middle of this century when you lot are all in power and I'm in my old people's home. I want to help to save the planet, but I take 20 minute showers. This is a really naughty way that climate change deniers have switched the argument. They're now blaming us as consumers. Well, it's because you use all this uh, petrol and all of this uh, coal for making electricity. That's the problem. So the government mandates that all electricity generated in the UK in five years time must be renewable. Then you can use your Nintendo Switch and anything else as much as you like, because it's all renewable. <laughs> uh, I love this one. And I'm, I'm completely on the side of the polar bear here. Poor polar bears. Perhaps they should be eating all 4x4 four four drivers. Four and a half to five million people went on strike before the pandemic to tell the adults to change the world, to make it a better place for everyone. I'd been on those school strikes, my own children had dragged me there. And if you have an opportunity in the future to go, I really do recommend it. I love this meme because it actually says, what should you do as a young person? 
And that's a question I get asked a lot. Becoming vegetarian, I think, is really important. It's one of the things that we as individuals can do. We can eat less meat. Now, I know for some of you, like me, that's going to be a struggle. So perhaps think about it in a different way. Perhaps have meat as a luxury once a week, then perhaps once a month, and then perhaps tip over into vegetarianism, but perhaps occasionally have a yummy steak if you need to. And that's the way to change your behavior. Understanding that breakdown of the climate is real. Absolutely. So we know all the science. But I think what is really important is that we should talk about it. Young people have a big, big voice. And actually, politicians listen more to you than they do to us scientists. Boom. Realization is there. Right. Firstly, it's from one of my favorite films, The Matrix. But secondly, it actually points out something really important. It's that climate change affects every part of the planet. It isn't just about the Arctic and polar bears, it's about all of us. It's going to create more heat waves, more droughts, more wildfires, more floods and more storms. And actually, I think what is the greatest problem with climate change is the very poorest people in the world who have actually contributed the least greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, they're going to be the worst affected. This is a meme that I can really relate to. For the last 30 years, I have been studying climate change and I have been lobbying governments to do stuff. And they haven't. Things are about to change. And partly it's due to you and all the young people who have been protesting around the world. Because Britain has said, that they're going to go net carbon zero. So carbon neutral by 2050. The EU is following suit. They're going to go carbon neutral by the same date. And the big news is that China has declared that their emissions will peak by 2030 and then they will be net zero by 2060. So perhaps, maybe this year, governments are really taking climate change seriously. Humans mess with climate, climate messes with humans. Humans. Do you know what? There's not really much to add to that, is it? I mean, we are the only species that could actually understand that we're messing with climate. So of course, we're smart enough to fix it. Back in the day, climate change was called seasons. Oh, people who say, what happened to global warming on the first sight of a cooler day in fall? Well, it snowed last year. Climate change is not going to make winters warmer than summers. But in the UK, what it's done is it made our winters warmer and wetter than they were 10 or 20 years ago. And they're making our summers hotter and drier. And so the whole of our climate is shifting. One of the really interesting things in the United Kingdom is because of climate change, the sea ice above Norway has melted further back. And actually what that does is allow a corridor for Arctic air to sneak down and every so often hit the eastern side of Britain. Like the beast from the east when all this snow came. And everybody sees this snow and goes, oh, it's a really cold winter. No. The winter was actually very warm and wet and what we had was two or three days of heavy snow that suddenly disappeared. So that doesn't change the average of the winter which was warm and wet and it's not just the seasons. Climate activist predictions. Global warming will melt the Arctic, but new ice age is coming. This is the disinformation that climate change deniers throw out. They're doing this all the time. They will tell you that um, the science isn't right, and actually the world isn't warming up as much as we think it is. They'll tell you that CO2 isn't the control, it's just natural variations. They'll also tell you that we can't afford to fix the world because, you know, it's too expensive. All of these are false. And in the book, I have a chapter that literally goes through every single denier's argument and go, this is wrong, here's the fact. This is wrong, here's the fact. And actually what I find really upsetting about climate change deniers is this is a deeply selfish approach. What I want to do, and I know you do, is want to save the planet for us, for future generations. It's no good 
my generation completely wrecking the planet going, I had a brilliant time when you lot then have to clear up the mess. Cleaning up air pollution is actually great for our health. Rewilding and actually planting more forests actually stops flash flooding and actually makes our environment a lot more healthy and aesthetically pleasing. Why do they want to stop us making a better, safer, nicer world? I never understood that bit. How I feel talking to people about why climate change is important. Single plastic is okay if you recycle it. Me. If you think about your parents and your relatives, they're all incredibly busy people. And what they don't have time for is to go, hmm, I'm now going to stop and worry about saving the whole planet. I'm incredibly fortunate, I'm a scientist, and that's what I do for a living. So I think we need to have different ways to talk to our parents, a way of actually communicating with them to say, look, there are some simple things that we can change. How we get our electricity, what car we buy, whether we go on a staycation or we go abroad. All these things can actually be an interesting debate within a family and actually make people feel empowered and included in decisions about how to actually deal with climate change. And on the recycle uh, single-use plastics, we produce 300 million tonnes of plastic per year. Very little of it is recycled. One of the most important things that you can do is use your consumer power. You can choose not to have a plastic water bottle. If you need coffee or tea, you can actually have your own cups. Big companies all around the world are realizing that climate change is an important issue and they're trying to change. Many of them will tell you that they're going carbon neutral and that's all fantastic. But we need you as the consumers to actually put your money where your heart is. <laughs> My knee after carrying around this fat, juicy anxiety about climate change all day. <sighs> you don't need to be anxious about climate change. Yes, it is important. Yes, it is worrying. But we have all the solutions. This is something I do in the book. I talk about the solutions that we have as individuals. What can we do? What can companies do and how can they change? And how can governments actually help us and themselves do the right thing to reduce the effects of climate change? And I think some of the things that you can do, firstly, you can change your lifestyle. You can change the amount of meat you eat, reduce it. You can lobby your parents and your friends to actually reduce the amount of energy they use. Going on a green tariff is very easy. You will be switching to an electric car in the next couple of years anyway, so perhaps you can hurry up your parents to change now. So there's lots of really positive things that you can do. And actually the most positive thing you can do is hear your voice. Shout it from the treetops, okay? Go out there, go on strike, tell everybody about climate change, make your voice heard. Oh, so Harry Potter, and the mirror that shows you what your heart most desires. What do we all want in the future? Well, what we really want is a safe world where there are going to be 10 billion people by the middle of the century, all of whom are, have shelter, who have food, have water, access to education. We want a climate that is stable, that is not threatening anybody, and in the book, what I do is I show you what the nightmare could look like at the end of this century if we don't do enough, but also what ecotopia. What could our world look like if we do everything we can now to make our world better, safer, healthier, more secure for actually everybody on the planet? We're humans. We can do that if we really want to. All we need is the policies and actually the governments to actually lead us in the right way. And for me, the most hopeful thing is it's you. You are going to be the leaders of industry, the leaders of governments, leaders of universities in the future who will be taking us on that journey to a better, brighter, lovelier world. So, my book, How to Save Our Planet, The Facts, 
is out now and subscribe to the platform for more bookish videos. Please go and buy a copy.